All right, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, oh, okay, it wasn't seven years, it was three years for the, the drought, saying, Go ye, show ye thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Now remember, Ahab is Jezebel's husband. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Well, yeah, duh. There's no rain for three years. Uh, it's going to be hard to grow a plant. Besides maybe a cactus, right? And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if, if this Obadiah is the Obadiah that wrote the book of Obadiah. It might be the same one, it might not. I'm not sure. Verse 4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, she killed the prophets of the Lord. See, this is why the Lord said, don't tolerate evil, but get rid of it. Because when you tolerate evil, it spreads like a cancer. And then it infects the whole body. And then when they get in power, they do not tolerate the Lord's people. They don't tolerate them. And uh, anybody thinks I don't know what I'm talking about, well... Today's May 1st, 2021. You watch. You watch. You watch what's going to happen to the Christians in the next coming years. The evil ones are not going to tolerate Christians. Absolutely not. And all these pre-trib rapture people, they don't even... I, I wonder if they even know the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I mean, sometimes I wonder. Because... Why are they deceived? You know, they people don't even bother to read the Bible. Kent Hoven, uh, who's real good on fighting evolution, he spent nine, nine and a half years in prison for bogus charges. They wanted to shut him up because he was talking about the uh, N and then the W and then the O. Um, and he was very popular and they wanted to shut him up and discredit him. So when he started reading the Bible on his own, he was like, oh, wait a minute. I've been taught pre-trib rapture all my life. Where is it? I can't find it. See, that's the thing. When you don't have a, a, a pastor telling you about it and you just read the Bible by itself, you can't find it because it's not there. But people won't read the Bible. They'll go to church and listen to John Hagee or whatever, or Benny Hinn. You know, God wants you to make you a millionaire. You just have to have faith and speak it out loud. God bless me with millions. Uh, praise uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, well... If you get your Bible doctrines from TBN or the 700 Club, you got a problem. Throw away your NIV and get a King James and, and open it up and read. Because that's what happens. The wicked, when they get into power, they're not going to tolerate the Christians. They, you know, these wicked, these, these people know you know, the people who live in San Francisco, uh, those that practice magic and what have you, they know full well if there was a real, true revival, their lives would be in danger. They know this. They know this better than you do, probably. Well, maybe not those that listen to my ramblings, but... But the average churchgoer, not a clue. It's a shame that these evil people know what the Bible says better than churchgoers. It's, it, it makes me insane, almost. 
I guess crazy for Jesus. I don't know. Verse 4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, she killed them. She killed, Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord. That Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So there was a hundred of them, fifty in this cave and fifty in that cave, and he fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto all fountains of water and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as, Ob and as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. Now remember, Ahab's wicked. Elijah told Ahab, there's not going to be any rain because of your wickedness, basically. So what does Obadiah say? Verse 9. And he, Obadiah, said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. You know? Uh, Ahab's been looking all over the creation for you because he wants to get rid of you. And now you're going to have me go tell him I found you? And then when he can't find you, he's going to kill me for getting his hopes up. Hmm. Well, that's the Bob translation. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? See, it wasn't Ahab killing the prophets of the Lord. It was his wicked wife, Jezebel. She killed the prophets of the Lord. How I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah's here. And he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Oh, here it is, old friends meeting together, right? And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Are you the troublemaker? You're the one making all these problems? Verse 18. And he, Elijah, answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Uh, hey, Elijah, I mean, uh, hey, uh, Ahab, why don't you pray to Balaam, the, the false god, the Satanism? Why don't you pray to them and ask them for rain? Why don't you? Yeah. Why don't you pray to Balaam and ask him for rain? Oh, you did. And there was no rain. 
Oh, okay. Well, what does that tell you, dumb? Um, you dumb donkey? I'm trying to make this uh, kid-friendly, you know. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the grove, 400, that eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Yep, the people kept quiet. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And ye call on the name of your gods, plural, got to have that hiss on the end, gods, that hiss of the serpent, right? And I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of all, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, and must be awakened. Yeah, maybe he's busy talking to somebody or, you know, he's searching for something or he's far away or maybe he's asleep. And you got to wake him up. Verse 28. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancet till the blood cushed out of them. And yeah, I know I read this not too long ago. I'm sorry, but got to cover it again. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the Son of Israel, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water. All right, so in verse 33, And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. You know, it's kind of hard to start a fire when you got wood that's wet with water, right? And he said, do it again the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water round, ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. Why three times? I'm not sure, but Father, Son, Holy Spirit? I don't know. Could be. Verse 36. So, water ran all around the altar, and the trench was filled with water too. Really hard to start a fire with all that water, right? And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. 
Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And if you think the Lord has any different feelings in the New Testament than what he felt in the Old Testament, well, if you feel the Lord doesn't want us to do the same thing today that he did back then, well, I hope you enjoy dying for the faith. Because it's millions of people that feel like feel just like that. Why we're in the mess we're in today. 1966, Anton Levy changed his name to LeVay. Of course, they'll lie and say his name was Howard Stanton, but that's a lie. Created the Church of Satan on the sixth month, on the sixth day of 1966. 6666. You know, if we'd had real Christian men, well, guess what? Verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Oh, but Chaplain Bob, God wants to give everybody a chance now to repent. And he loves them all and wants them all to be saved. I don't think so. You want to worship Satan? The guy that tried to kill God? And, and you want to let him live? And you wonder why there's hundreds of thousands of children? Well, I, I don't know how many. I don't know how many missing children go missing every year. But uh, in Georgia alone one year, just the ones in state custody, just the ones in state custody, an average of two children a day vanished in just Georgia. I remember, that's not the other 49 states. And that's only the children in custody of the state. I don't know what they call it, child protective services or social services or whatever they call it. An average of two a day. And there was a woman who was a state Congress House of Representative or something. She was, you know, state legislature. She got to, said, something's up with this. What's up with this? She started opening up an investigation. Next thing you know, her and her husband commit suicide. Yeah. I forget her name. I don't think it was McKinney. McKinney's still alive. This woman that I'm talking about, she died with her husband. Yeah, and probably is hundreds of thousands. It's probably well over 100,000 children disappear. Probably. There was a Christian detective in Los Angeles. He started investigating the uh, disappearances of children. Found out that there were certain times of the year when children would disappear. Halloween, Christmas, and Easter were like couple weeks before those so-called holidays, children would vanish. What do you think they're doing with these missing children? Oh, but God wants us to spare these people so they have a chance to be saved. I don't think so. What do you think Satanists do with these children? I know what they do. There's a reason why the Lord said to do to them what he said to do with them. God says what he means and means what he says. And slew them there. 
Verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked, and he said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, saying to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezebe uh, Jezreel. Ahab went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Uh, Ahab's in a chariot with horses, and a Elijah outran the horses. That's some Holy Spirit power there. What's his name? Usain Bolt or whatever his name, the guy that won the Olympics. He ain't got nothing on Elijah, let me tell you what. All right.